Hi guys, this is Jamie. I want to welcome you to my channel today. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. Um, today is going to be part five of my What is in My Case series. I hope you guys have been enjoying this series of basically me showing you my coloring supplies case by case. Um, I have created a playlist if you guys weren't aware I've been putting every single video in a playlist in case you miss a video and you want to watch it or if you want to just play the playlist as a whole and listen to it while you're coloring whatever you want to do so today is going to be basically my jumbo cases and um, I'm going to get through as many things as I can for you so sit back, relax, grab a drink, and we'll get started. First case I'm going to show you is this one. It is my polar bear case. It um, says paint your colors, believe in yourself. This isn't like a jumbo case in regards to thickness. It's just really tall. I'm going to make sure I can... Like you can see as much as you possibly can here. It's a one zipper, has a handle on the side, and in here um, holds my Heathrone uh, gel pens. So this, uh, I think this is a 60 count gel pen case. And the Heathrone gel pens, they'll indicate if they're pastel metallic or normal or glitter. That's neon. So the normals say standard on them. And then down here, I have some gel tonic gel pens. And the people that make these are the same people that make the Link Shine gel pens. And these ones are just solid color gel pens. And there's some extras right here, what I couldn't fit. I think that these kind of cases are perfect for things that don't sharpen down like gel pens or twistable pencils because if you put pencils in here that you have to sharpen they'll get short too short to like display so I think these pencil cases are fitting for this kind of stuff so that is this one Next case I have is one of my favorite cases. Um, so it has triangles on it, has a handle, one zipper. I wish that this particular type of case came in larger and in smaller because I really like this, this op how you open these. This one has my toy markers, so my Arteza toy markers. Twee. Twee marker, I guess you could say. And now the Twee marker is a water-based marker, and um, they're from Arteza, and they have a color name and color number, and they have a little brush end right here, and then they have a super fine end, a tiny, tiny on that end. I don't get much use out of this end, more more or less I get used out of this end. Now these are different. Um, they don't they don't respond to paper like I want them to. It's almost like they have a fiber tip. It says they're non-toxic and they're blendable but when I use them it tends to peel the paper if I use them directly on the paper. Now I've seen lots of people scribble these on a palette and use them like a watercolor so I'm still on the fence about these, I'll be honest. I have the 100 set, and I used to keep them in a tin under my bed, but they never got used in the tin, so I basically upgrade them to a case so that um, maybe they'll get more use, and I, I think I just need to find the right paper for this particular marker, and then I'll be good to go. So that is this case.
next case I have is exactly like the case you just saw, but this one has little faces all over it, and it's kind of like a gray background. And this one houses all of my, sorry, I just wobbled the camera, all of my Black Widows. Uh, so I don't have them in like type of order. I have them in color range so I can find the colors that I need when I'm coloring. So as you can tell, some of them I have colored and kind of put little things of what color they should be on the ends just because what happens is with the old set they don't have dipped ends and it's hard for me to tell what kind of pencil is what pencil without without a dipped end so basically I swatched it on these little stickers and then wrapped them around the ends if you can tell this one's really short so it's in a pencil extender I've used these a lot and I've had to buy a second set of scorpions I've used these so much so yeah I really really like black widow pencils they're one of my favorite pencils I will be honest with you guys I remember my very first set was the scorpion and I just burned through those babies I loved them so much so this is my black widow collection and I have all of the black widows Next one I have here in this pencil case is exactly the same as those other two pencil cases, except it has adorable pandas on it. I love pandas. They're one of my favorite animals. And this case is so cute. I, If I need a big case like this again, I wouldn't mind having two panda cases. I like them so much. Their little faces are just adorable. And this one houses my Arteza or Arteza colored pencils. These are just the regular expert wax base pencils. Um, 120 count. As you can see, some are backwards because I use them for projects and never turn them all the other direction. <laughs> so yeah, it's fine. At least you can tell that they've been well loved and I've used them. You can tell which colors I go for most. I used to house my Arteza gel pens here, but I took them out and put them in with my jelly rolls because um, I kept forgetting I had gel pens in this case. This is so tiny. Sorry, my daughter just woke up and asked me a question. So that is this one, uh, my Arteza collection, or my regular 120 Artezas. Yeah. Next case I'm going to show you is by Ayn Shan. It says, want to be a dream maker. I love this case. It's like a fox. I wish that this print was on the case like the panda honestly because these cases are kind of a pain in the butt <laughs> I'll show you why there's only one zipper and the handles right here so they open like this and these um, house my gold faber pencils so these are my gold faber and they're a recent purchase I have used them a little bit but they're such a recent purchase I haven't really used them used them and then these ones are the gold faber aqua ones so the watercolor edition they i think they're called gold faber aqua and these just have um numbers on them they don't have color names i don't think and i don't think these have color names either just the numbers yeah and then in the very back here are my first set of gold fabers. So those are just extras. And then I have all this extra room for other things. Maybe if I um, get the gold faber classic, 
pencils. I'll put them in here with this. But until then, this just houses the gold fabric ones. Which is great in this box case. Next one is a case just like that other one. This one's the unicorn case. It's pink and has unicorns on it. It's really cute if you like unicorns. And this one seems a lot more bulky just because of what's inside. What's inside this is actual markers. So these are the Pecos, yeah, the Pecos dual brush pens. And they have a fine point and a brush point. I've used these in Johanna Basford books. And they don't bleed through. They don't have a color name and they don't have a color number. But it's pretty easy to tell what color they are because the whole thing is one color. And as you can see, I have assorted them in color range the best I could anyway. And I've got them all in here. That's why it was kind of bulky. When you're putting these in, you can only put two in a slot. When you're doing pencils, you can do three because the pens and markers are thicker, it seems to be. I am just stretched to grab this one. <laughs> so this one uh, is a beautiful, beautiful cover, or beautiful case. Uh, it has lilies on it. Lily is my favorite flower. And um, this dark teal is really pretty. And this one houses these babies. These are the color 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 pencils. These were the ones that were in the black case with the elephant on it. And I've seen so many like knockoffs that are so similar to this. I don't know if they're f all formulated the same or what, but they have a color name. But as you can see, the O on the orange is already rubbing off and same with the number. I think over time, this will just rub off. Um, these I feel are like a bargain friendly pencil. Um, I put them in this case just cause the set is 180. And that is a big set of pencils. I think that these are perfect for your cheaper books. Um, ones that you don't really care what pencils you're using. This is a really soft pencil. And um, the only thing I don't like about these pencils, and you probably don't realize it, is after you're done with them, you want to make sure to spray a fixative over them. Because if you put another piece of paper on top of it, like if you close your book and say it's a double-sided book, it will rub and it will leave imprints of those colors on the reverse side. So the pigment does rub off. So if you use these pencils, and they said this is the same formula as the ones that come in the red tin with the black barrel, I highly suggest you use a fixative spray after you're done with your work so it doesn't rub on your other pages. Now, if you're using a single sided, it doesn't matter, but that is what I would suggest. Next one I have here, the beautiful turquoise color. Um, you probably notice I have a lot of this brand. It's like shoe, shoe on there. So, yeah. And this kind of feels like a fake leather case. And I actually like the feel of this. It kind of feels classy, fancy. If I can get the little things out. I may just didn't close it all the way. So this one houses my root printer. 
So these are my Burt Fair Square pencils. As you can see, I have lots of little divots in my pencils. It is because I couldn't find the right sharpener for the longest time to sharpen these. And I finally found the perfect sharpener, thanks to the Coloring Diva. And it is this sharpener. It's an electric sharpener. It's from Eighth Matte. And it can, it can do really skinny pencils, and it can do really big pencils. And when I use this sharpener, it gives me an excellent point and it won't damage the barrel of my pencil and I don't have to use a little hand crank. Um, a lot of times I get wrist pain if I use a manual pencil sharpener. The only manual sharpener I use is I use the Teagall little pink sharpener for um, my Prismacolors. Other than that, I want to be able to use an electric sharpener on my pencils. So, yeah. And see how nice and sharp these points are? It's because I used that. But before I was using a hand crank one, that kept getting these stuck, which presented a big problem. Let me just make sure I don't have... No, these are Brute Furners as well. just wanted to make sure the whole thing was Brute Furners. So the Brute Furner Square, and they have um, a number on them. No, And this um, writing is like Japanese or Chinese or something. And I'm sure it's a color name, but I don't read that, so I don't know what that says. I have another case from them. This one, this one doesn't have their name on it, but... I know it's the same company. It's a pink one. And this one houses all of my castle art pencils. Now, the castle art pencils were my very first big set of colored pencils that I got in 2019. And they're a soft, a soft pencil. This one I used up. It's no longer there. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend these for any beginning colorist because I feel like they're an excellent student grade pencil and you'll get lots of use out of them. I know I have over the years. Now, um, after time, it did start to develop a little bit of pain in my hand, but it could be I was just coloring too much. And so, yeah, um, I, st I want to keep these because they were one of my very first sets of pencils. And like, as you can see, when I first started, I was way into using my greens. So I used those really, really well. Next one is from the same company. This is nice crocodile-like feeling leather. I like the feel of this one a lot. And it only comes in the big ones. So this is a 250, I think. And um, has a nice handle. And this one, I have to unzip all of these because it houses a variety. It has four zippers. First things first, every pencil in this case is a watercolor pencil, and this first set is the Anna Valencia, Valencia, or something, V-A-L-A-C-C-I, I know I will say that wrong, it does have a color name and it does have a number. Now, these went on sale very, very cheap, and I saw them, I think it was Coloring with Donna, Coloritaville, or I don't remember who it was I saw first that had these, and maybe it was the Art Gear Guide, I can't remember, but they performed really, really nicely, and 
they're nice and thick like a polychromos and I saw that they were only $14.99 and I couldn't pass them up. I haven't used them that much just because I need to do more watercolor pencil work, but I had them and I couldn't pass up that deal because it was a really good deal. And then after that, I have my Arteza uh, watercolor pencils and I only have the 72 set. I haven't seen the need to buy the 120 just because I've only used these like five times and there's no reason to buy the big set if these aren't heavily used. So I might as well use these ones up first before I get the next set, a bigger set. But these actually work well with the Arteza. Um, uh, 120s of the regular color pencils and I would have to say they do a great job of making a watercolor pencil I really like them and um, it has a color name and a number and a light fast rating on these and on the other ones I forgot to mention um, right here is the start of my Prismacolor watercolor pencils so here are all my Prismacolor watercolor pencils. These, these are good. They're not the best watercolor pencil. I'll be honest. I only have the 24 set. For some reason, I thought the 24 was the biggest, but I guess you can get a 36. And it has a color name and a number. And these do perform well, but they're not... Well, like I've seen swatches and stuff, and this is the reason why I want the Albert Durer watercolor pencils so much. There is like no comparison. It was like night and day difference between these and the Albert Durer. And so I would really like the Albert Durer ones. But these, these particular ones I got a long time ago, and someone was selling them for $8.00. On eBay so I snatched them up now these are extra watercolor pe pencils for from Arteza I got these in my Christmas it was like a uh, an advent calendar that I bought from Arteza during Christmas time so that um, you peeled things back one a day and they gave you three uh, well I guess they gave you yeah, three watercolor pencils, and this is, um, I think it's a graphite pen pencil, so I just put it in there. That's my only graphite pencil. <laughs> okay, this bad boy. Now, this is my thickest case, guys. Uh, this is the purple crocodile. And I want to say this is a 300 count or something like that. This one houses my Prismas, guys. Probably thinking, holy cow, you have that many Prismas? Well, I started off with the 132. And I used them. And then this last year when they went on sale for they just kept getting cheaper and cheaper. If you guys remember that sale, I couldn't pass them up because I was missing so many colors. I added up the price of how much it would be to buy them open stock. And then I saw the price of how much they were on sale. It was cheaper for me to buy the 150 than to buy the open stock of what I needed. And I was like, well, I'm almost out of this light peach. I might as well buy more. And so basically I put as many as I could in this case. I still have a tin that I keep by my desk of extra prisoners that didn't fit in here. But as you can see, you can tell which ones are well used. I do use my prismas and I do like them. I don't use them for everything though because there's a time and a place for a Prismacolor pencil is how, how I think of it. I know some people out there are absolutely in love with the Prismas 
and they are a beautiful pencil and they blend beautifully but sometimes you don't want that cakey um too much of a blended look i i don't want to say it like that because it always looks good and nice and soft and blended like picture perfect but sometimes you actually want to see those strokes and sometimes it's hard to achieve that with a prismacolor but i do love the fact that i can make some really gorgeous gorgeous things happen with prismacolors like in flowers and skin and just that soft beautiful appearance now you do have to they tend to burnish really fast and create wax bloom you do need to brush off that wax bloom or it can cause your pages to look kind of funny but i absolutely love the skin tone type of things in the Prismacolor set. So this is my Prismacolors, my mega case of Prismacolors. So I'm good on Prismas. <laughs> All right, and then here's this mega case that you guys just barely saw in my in my haul earlier at the last of July. And this bad boy holds all of my jelly rolls, Sakura jelly rolls, and all of my knockoffs or imitations of Sakura jelly rolls. I consider the Arteza glitter gel pens kind of like a knockoff because they're shaped like a Sakura jelly roll. So I have some of those. I have some of the dollar store ones. Um, I have a variety of the Sakura jelly rolls. I've got, obviously, I've got Moonlights. I've got um, Soufflés. I've got Metallics. I've got Stardust. I've got the kind that turn gold. I have the kind that turns silver. I have the jelly roll glaze. Um, I do not have the, the Moonlights that are the new edition. They're kind of like, um, I don't, I don't know what you would say. They're kind of like autumn looking colors. I don't have those ones, the ones that were the newest release. I've been wanting to get those, but I haven't gotten those ones yet. But basically... This case is completely full, and as soon as um, I go through one, I usually just replace it because I, I have a box of extras that if, if a case starts to look a little empty, I can always put an extra in it. I used to keep these in a little cup by my desk, and it was like a Easter basket. But I couldn't find the colors I needed when I needed them. So I think that putting them in a case, it will be easier for me to find what I need when I need it. And it, I also sorted them by size because I had some of the 06s and the 08s, but I prefer the 10s or the 10s. So they're a thicker, thicker pen. So that is this one. And I don't think, yeah, these... These don't say a color name on them. Yeah, these don't have color names. They, I, I don't think they ever have. And then the last two I'm going to show you are not really in cases. They're in the things that um, they came in in Amazon. And I haven't removed them because they're kind of a unique box. So I will show them to you. This one is the Chameleon Color Tone Pencils. And these were on sale for about $20. And this case has magnets right here. So it stands up like this. So if you could see that, it stands up like this. And each pencil is dual ended. So this one has a white and a cream. And I will tell you right now, this is the hardest pencil that I have in my collection. 
they give off excellent pigment I will tell you that but they are hardcore suckers <laughs> um, uh, and if you say run out of a certain color you can't just buy one of these pencils you have to buy a whole nother set I have swatched these but I haven't used them yet because since they're such a hard pencil I'm kind of trying to figure out what I think would be best I'm thinking something with fine details maybe like Villain Sun um, by Thomas Lovatomic or something more intricate that you want vibrant colors with so yeah these are excellent pig pigments so and what's nice about these is it's like they give you the compliment so say you want to color it light and then you can shade with this this is pear this is basil they have some pretty nice names too but yeah i have those Maybe sometime I'll put them in an actual case case, but I think this is kind of a unique uh, portfolio style case. So this is the chameleon color tone. And then the last one that I'm going to show you in this video is this. Um, this is the uni colored pencils, the Mitsubishi uni color pencils. And this is a very unique case. Um, I don't think I will take these out just because whoever manufactured this case really thought this out. And it's hard to show these, but if you can see all the pencils in there, they're all in here and they're beautiful. And they have. They actually go up. Oh, it's like I wanna, I wanna show you how this works, but at, at the same time, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. So you should be able to set it on your desk, like, like open, and you can bring these down like this. So all of your pencils, I have used these, all of your pencils can easily be accessible. Now I haven't used these as much as I would want to because as you can see it covers my entire desk. I can't, where am I going to put my coloring? <laughs> so uh, even though I love the idea of this case. I think in the long run it may end up being that I take these out and put them in another case even though I really think this is a unique setup it's just it's not functionable for me because I I won't use my pencils this way because I don't have the space to actually color if that makes sense I'm these pencils uh, let's talk about these pencils for a minute. So these ones do have a color name and they do have a number. Uh, I don't know. Don't know about light fast rating. Maybe they have a light fast rating on their website. All the color names are also listed down here. And these pencils um, are really nice pencils. They're more of a harder lead to me. They're not super hard, but they perform pretty nicely. I mean, they give off the color that they say they're gonna give off. And you can keep going and layering and layering and layering and, and you have no problem with them. I am not sure if these are wax or oil. I don't remember. I'm sorry guys. They feel kind of waxy. So I'm guessing they're wax. I know you can get the Uni Mitsubishi Uni pencils in a smaller case. Um, but I 
that I got the large case because they were on sale one day. It was almost like they were almost going out of stock and they wanted to get rid of the last ones they had in the warehouse or something. And so I picked them up. But these are the Uni Color Pencil Mitsubishi Color Pencils. <laughs> so, yeah, there's those. Like I said, I probably will end up putting these in a case just for functional purposes. Even though I love this case and I love the design, it just isn't functional in my space. I mean, it's hard to use something if you don't have the space to use it. So there is that. And I said that was going to be my last thing, but I was just thinking I should show you one more thing that is at my desk and it doesn't have another like family to go to to put it into another video. I have this little guy. This is a Zip It colored, um, a Zip It case. Um, it's like a, I guess, pencil a uh, pencil box more or less. And this has all my um, Prismacolor Scholars. And so I can just go through these and pick what I need and use whatever I want. I put these next to my desk. These are one of my go-to pencils. Like if I am doing a marker base and I need to do some shading on top, I'll just pull these. It's easy enough. And I don't mind sorting through them. It's not that big of a deal. And this is like kind of a hard case and soft at the same time. These zipper cases are really nice. But yeah, that's all I'm going to show you guys for this video of part five. Um, a part six is going to be uh, tins that I have. Um, mechanical color pencils just I'm I mean I'll look and see what I have or maybe I'll just make part six part of my um, actual desk tour because a lot of that stuff is either in a coloring cart or in a desk so maybe this will be the end of the cases it just depends um, so look forward to the last part. Hopefully the next one is the last part. If not, I'll let you know next time. And I hope you guys have been enjoying this series. Um, remember to keep smiling and have a wonderful day. I will see you guys next video. If you have questions, just pop them in the comments. Feel free to email me if you need to, or you can shoot me a message on Instagram. And if you have questions about any specific pencil, you can let me know as well, and I will give you my honest opinion in my experience. So, yeah. Have a good day, guys. Bye.